Hi guys, in my last video I showed you behind the scenes on location where we were filming the music video for the lead single from EP number two, a song called I Don't Love You Anymore. We wrapped filming around two, packed everything down and everyone else went home, whereas I had a second journey ahead of me, down to Rockfield Studios in Wales. Rockfield is the legendary recording studio where Queen recorded multiple classics including Bohemian Rhapsody, where the Stone Roses recorded a lot of Second Coming, but most importantly where Oasis recorded one of the greatest albums ever made. Watch the story Morning Glory. So today I'm going to take you in there with me. I'm going to show you some of the key places where the magic happened and also generally just show you around one of the best and most famous recording studios in the world. Rockfield, the studio on the farm. Well, I've just arrived. It's been a very long drive. Um, I left Yorkshire at two. It's now 20 to seven. But over there, is Rockfield Studios. The whole idea on this channel with my label is I want you guys to be there with me behind the scenes so let's go take a look at it. So this is the road in. I've just parked up outside and there's the entrance. Rockfield Studios. It's on this tiny little back road, just like North Yorkshire, where I've come from. So, uh, in we go. So you've got two studios at Rockfield, both equally prestigious. The Coach House Studio is the oldest. It was established in 1968, and that's the studio in which Oasis recorded the Morning Glory album. Five years later, in 1973, the second Rockfield studio was built, which is the Quadrangle. And that is actually arguably the more famous of the two studios, and that's where Queen recorded a lot of their output in the 70s, and particularly Bohemian Rhapsody. So I've gone in, I've parked up and I've found my room, but I thought I would walk you in so you can see everything that I've seen so far. So as you come up the drive, your first turning on the right leads to a very famous wall. Now I don't know if you recognise that, but that is the Wonder Wall. That's the wall that That's I sat on that day. Yeah, like yeah. Fucking, set you up up like there. A fucking idiot playing Wonderwall. Yeah, I remember all the sheep were watching me do Wonderwall. I was, I was, don't was more freaked out, me or them. And I was like, I remember it. What time of the year was it we were here? Was it like... April, April May. April May. Yeah. And it was fucking freezing. And I remember saying to Owen, I've got this song called Wonderwall. I want to record it on a, on a, on a, wall. On a wall. Yeah. That is the wall on which Noel Gallagher sat to record the guide track for Wonderwall, which is the first thing you hear on the Morning Glory album. That there is the Coach House studio. And if we come up here, that building there at the top of the drive is the living quarters for the people in the coach house studio and that's where Oasis stayed. So when you see video of Oasis shooting each other with uh, fire extinguishers, that's all in there. Fuck it. <laughs> And those birds you hear there, they could be the descendants of the birds tweeting at the beginning of the Morning Glory album. And as you can see from this footage from the Oasis visit in 1995, the place really actually hasn't changed a great deal. In most respects, it still looks absolutely identical to that April-May time in 1995 when the band were there. We're not based in that studio, we are based up here through that little gate 
in the quadrangle. That's the quadrangle and that's where I will be working on this visit. And here is Liam farting around with the football on the grass just outside the quadrangle during the morning glory sessions. Looks exactly the same. That's Steve, who I am producing and playing session guitar for, just having a jam on a stone trough. And that is a couple of dogs. So as well as being a studio, this is a working farm. So in the quadrangle you've got like horse stable things here, and there's a horse box there as well. That's the actual studio, that's the band accommodation all the way along there. And this third side here is where all the offices are and all the maintenance stuff. And now I'm going to show you my room through that door. So you come in here into a little open area. And that's my room in there. Let's have a look. So it's just like a hotel room really, except it's one of the most famous studios in the world. There's my bed, there's a little ensuite bathroom there. Sofa, wardrobe, drawers, and so on. And now I'm having a shower because I've driven down to Monmouth from North Yorkshire and I am absolutely minging. Okay, we've got the drums recorded. It's all sounding pretty good. And I wanted to just come up here. I've come past the coach house. Now that's where Oasis stayed. I'm coming up past here to these fields. So you can't see it, but down that way somewhere is um, Mono Valley, where all the tracks for Slide Away were recorded in 1994. It's not a studio anymore. The first time we went over there was when we went to fucking have a little snoop on the Stone Roses, wasn't it? And, yeah. and like, you drove the Combine Harvester yeah. over there. And I'm on about a proper combine proper harvester. Big one, ones yeah. that you gotta get ladders up to, and it's like miles, it's higher than that fucking move. Yeah. And he fucking starts it in one go, and off we fucking go. Now I came up here because I wanted to show you the fields that Liam and Bonehead drove the combine harvester across from Mono Valley to here, to Rockfield, when the Stone Roses were recording here. But um, according to Kingsley, they actually drove it down the road, <laughs> which is, extremely dangerous and very naughty. Had a proper countryside start to the day today. I got up to make my breakfast and I unwrapped a packet, an earwig about that big, had crawled up inside and uh, uh, dropped a thing, threw that in the bin. Then I got back to my room and I put this hat on and I just looked in the mirror and saw, there was something on top of it. I was like, what's that? I reached up to touch it and ah, fucking wasp. So I pasted its brains across the wall with the Beatles complete songbook. Behind these walls is the legendary coach house studio and we sadly didn't get a chance to look in there this time, but that's okay. It leaves something for the next visit. Now all the cars have gone, which means the band that were in here must have also gone. Okay, so I didn't think I was going to get to go have a look inside the coach house, but it turns out the band that was in there are now gone. And uh, Joe, our sound engineer, is going to take me inside, so we're going to go in a minute and have a look inside the coach house. So here we go, this is the coach house studio, which Joe is going to open up for us now, so we can have a look inside. Just hit the lights. Yeah. So that's the door in, that leads into this little corridor and straight into here, which is the main mixing room. Hello. Don't film me, Tim. Uh, Seriously. Is Play this track on. This is the nerve centre, the bridge, as we call this. Full steam ahead! And behind the glass, behind the mixing desk, you've got the two main rooms, and there's another room right at the back and a vocal booth. So this is where it all happened. This is where Nick Bryan, Noel and Owen Morris sat for about... 10 days, two weeks, and recorded one of the best albums ever. Brilliant. 
And then in here we've got the main studio. It's a lot smaller than it looks on the telly. Yeah. And you can see from this footage that Alan White's kit was on the drum riser just on the other side of the glass and Liam did his vocals not in the booth right at the back but in the middle of the room. Or the Liam. Dum da da dum dum. That's the piano from Don't Look Back in Anger, and I just played the opening Imagine bit on it. Same piano. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Kingsley, just say that again, mate. What's that? Just what you said about where Noel sat for all his Noel sat by there. And with the, on the seat with his guitar, with all his guitars on, on my story Morning Glory, yeah. That's the spot where Noel did yeah, everything. Right so it seems that the vast majority of guitars and vocals for Morning Glory were all done in the same place. You have the mixing desk, then you have the glass partition, then there's a drum riser on which Alan White's drums were, and then just behind that there's just an open area in the middle of the studio, and Noel did his guitar tracks there, and Liam did his vocal tracks there. The only exception would be Roll With It, which was the first song they recorded, they recorded it live, and so Liam would have been in the vocal booth right at the back, Noel was partitioned off in a tiny little room at the back left, opposite the vocal booth, and the rest of the band were dotted around the studio. So when you see pictures yeah. of Noel and Owen Morris at Rockfield, it's there. And when Liam comes in the door, it's where them blokes are in high vis ship. Hello! <laughs> Voice of Rockfield! <laughs> Do I look good? You look lovely, Kingsley. No, I, 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 so, I, I, come I, on in, boys. Yeah. Hello, Liam. Hello, Liam. Uh, I'm here in the quadrangle. Here we are. Um, and that there is the studio. We're going to be going in there in, I think, about 10 minutes. So, here we are in the studio, and this is Joe, our sound engineer, who is currently sorting out the backing tracks. So here's something pretty cool. In the studio you've got these couches lining the back wall and then right above me all the way along loads of different bands have signed their names. I've made up a band name for the back wall. Wow. Uncle Zebediah's Purple Unicorn Factory. So through here is one of the studio rooms this piano here is the piano, the very one that Freddie Mercury recorded Killer Queen on. I just played Freddie's piano. I'm sat here now just outside the Coach House studio, underneath the Wonder Wall listening to the birds tweeting. This is probably exactly what it was like when Noel sat up there and recorded the uh, guide guitar track for Wonderwall. There's just bird song everywhere. There's a little weather vane up there and I can see the birds up on it now. There was step ladders, big fucking microphone stand. I remember Kingsley's <laughs> face when 20 grand of microphones up there on the wall, the wind going, Kingsley was... And he come walking up, what are you fucking doing? He's still outside oh, waiting, God. it's not going to rain, is it? Yeah. Is it? Oh yeah, and I, oh fucking hell, and I, I remember he's been really cold and saying into the mic to Owen, I think this is a shit idea. And he was like, no, it sounds fucking great. <laughs> like, fuck that. But, but even that made it, that's on, that's on the very start of the, the album. The very start of the album. Because you can hear the birds the, singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He was sat up there. The glamour. Ever since hearing Noel tell that story, it became an ambition of mine to play Wonderwall on the Wonderwall. So when I found out I was actually going to Rockfield to work, I realised my time had come. Now obviously I was there to work, I wasn't there to fart around filming stuff for my channel, but we had quite a lot of gaps in the day. Anyone who's recorded drums in a studio setting before knows there's a lot of waiting around when that stuff's all getting set up. So we were up at the Quadrangle studio, me and Rick, the cameraman, were just in the control room and nothing was happening and so we thought, should we go now? Yeah, go on then. 
So we snuck down there without telling anyone. I literally just climbed the wall. He passed me my guitar and we did it in one take. No wires, no mics other than the mic just on the camera. So you can hear tractors in the background. You can hear the birds tweeting just like at the beginning of the Morning Glory album. You can also even hear a few notes from the band inside the Coach House studio at the time. And that's really cool. I'm really glad we actually did it that way because you can hear all the sounds, all the vibe of the place. It's just like being there. So I pretty much climbed the wall, did the song, and then legged it before anyone caught us. This is Wonderwall performed on The Wonderwall at Rockfield, just outside the Coach House studio. And that was Wonderwall on the Wonderwall. Let me introduce you to some of the crew. <laughs> Nigel, drummer extraordinaire who put down some awesome stuff yesterday. And Rick, the man behind the camera, <laughs> who's very kindly filmed me on the Wonderwall singing Wonderwall. Well, it's uh, my last day at Rockfield now. It's Wednesday morning. And I'm getting ready to uh, go home. I'm up miles before everyone else. Uh, they're all still in bed back there, so I thought I'd go around and have one last look at the place. It really is something of a, a spiritual experience being here. This is a bit of a pilgrimage for me. I listened to the whole Morning Glory album on the way down here. It had to be done. I can't believe this is the place where it was recorded. 
And so, after having signed the guest book and said goodbye to everyone, I set off home from Rockfield knowing I would definitely be back. I spent another very long day on the road, driving back from South Wales to North Yorkshire and battling through 20 miles or so of unmoving traffic from all you guys waiting to get in early to the Leeds Festival. But hey, you're going to see Liam, so I guess I can't argue with that. I made it home. I am very, very tired. That was a long drive. But I didn't come away from Rockfield empty-handed. I stole a Rockfield Covid poster off the studio wall and a bog roll. It's just rock and roll. Now anyone who's followed my channel for a little while will know I talked about a master plan where I was going to release three EPs and an album and then another three EPs and a second album and if I had got things to a level I was happy with that second album sometime in the future would be recorded at Rockfield Studios with a proper band. But truth be told I'm feeling a bit impatient. Having been there, having been to Rockfield and been kind of blown away by it all. Part of me is tempted to just go sod it, I'm going to do the third EP there next year. <laughs>